What's going on guys? It's Simo and it's time again for ban list roulette. Now if you're new to the series, what I like to do is every time we are on the verge of a new ban list, I like to go ahead and take a satirical approach to how Konami might decide to implement some of these changes on any particular ban list because it sometimes seems like these decisions are completely random. So I thought we would go ahead and leave it to chance itself on some of the most controversial cards of any given format. Now, even though we are in the midst of this weird time where it's like we may not even get a ban list so it's kind of odd to be even be making this video because I can make this video when we may not get a ban list for like several months but nonetheless I want to go ahead and get this out here because this is one of your guys's favorite series and people do like to see not only these videos but also my actual more analytical ban list reactions which will be following this video but if you are still looking to play in some competitive TCG tournaments the pro play tour is doing weekend championships every single weekend for some insane prize money so if you haven't made plans for this weekend be sure to sign up for this weekend's championship by clicking the link down in the description below. But without further ado, let's play some ban list roulette. Now, if there's a single card we're going to discuss on this list that is almost guaranteed to get banned, it is Block Dragon. Block Dragon is pretty much the focal point of Adamantipator and is one of the reasons why the deck is one of the strongest decks of the current format. Giving a deck like Adamantipator, which is already a powerful deck, just this incredible level of recursion and advantage regeneration that pretty much any deck would love to have. Its resurrection from graveyard effect is it once per turn and even though its search effect is it doesn't matter when you can abuse it and use that effect both on your turn as well as your opponent's turn in tandem with cards like IP Mascarena. This card just does it all and the thing is I think Konami isn't exactly incentivized to hit their newest cards especially when they really haven't seen a lot of play especially physical play but Block Dragon is a relatively old card. This card was pretty much begging to be abused at some point already was being abused in some other decks but I think it's time has come but it doesn't matter here on banless roulette because all that fate rests in the wheel let's see where block dragon ends up Well, Block Dragon's still at three. Format's over. Good job, guys. We can go ahead and just end the video now because if this card doesn't get addressed, this there's going to be some serious problems moving forward. <laughs> now, another card that's up for debate that isn't like the biggest problem with Ad Emancipator, but still a problem card nonetheless, is Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. Being able to lock your opponent out of the extra deck indefinitely doesn't exactly spell fun and interactive for anyone. And the fact that Ad Emancipator is already one of the strongest decks, and this isn't even like the reason for that this is just like a bonus in addition to it yeah this card just has to go so many other decks can already abuse this card anyway in tandem with a card like union carrier so i feel like we should just hit this card now before it becomes a problem i mean if the best decks get hit some other decks are going to find a way to abuse this like orcus or just any dark based it's dark it's like one of the best attributes if not the best attribute in the game someone will find a way to abuse it i don't think any of us want to see it so let's see what the wheel does with this one Well, you know, Block Dragon didn't get banned, but at least we can take some solace in the fact that Dragon Buster Destruction Sword did. So add Emancipator aside, I feel like those are like the main problems with the deck. The deck's already very strong, but like again, Block Dragon just takes it over the edge entirely. Let's talk about Eldritch. Eldritch is probably a deck that a lot more people want to discuss and see where we go with on Banless Roulette this time around. And there is a lot of cards that we can talk about. And it's funny because it's like, it's not even from Eldritch specifically. It's just like the combo cards that folk that central around a single card which we'll get to a little bit later on but let's talk about a card like jet synchron right jet synchron is kind of like the one card enabler for a lot of these different combos the problem with jet synchron is that even if you hit jet synchron there's still other cards that are effectively jet synchron this is just the best card at doing what it does in most particular instances however it doesn't really matter like if this card gets hit because then people are just going to play something else anyway there are other cards that are pretty much you know centralizing or circulating around one card in particular, Jet Synchron being one of them. And so I feel like they're most likely not going to hit other cards, but like Jet Synchron might be on the radar. They hit Glow Up Bulb in the past for obvious reasons, as well as like Steam the Cloak. So maybe it's Jet Synchron's time. Who knows? Let's see what the wheel does with this one. All right, 
so Jet Synchron staying at three. Honestly, I could see this happening if some other cards get hit, but I still think Jet Synchron has a target on its back. But some people may point to a card like Link Cross. Link Cross just came out in Eternity Code, but keep in mind, after the first ban list after Link Cross came out in Japan, they put Link Cross to one. Now, would this really do anything? Probably not, because most of the combo decks pretty much only play one of this card anyway. Some play two just so they can do the combo twice, but I think those are few and far between. Other decks can abuse Link Cross at more than one, even though we don't have the cards here in the TCG to necessarily take advantage of that yet. But any card that's producing multiple tokens for like essentially free probably isn't the smartest idea in a game where links exist. So I think Link Cross has a target on its back, even though it is relatively new. So let's go ahead and see where Link Cross ends up. All right, well, Link Cross is getting banned. Um, I think that's fine. Like, I don't think people would hate this. I just don't think this is the most likely considering the fact that it just came out. But another card we can discuss is Mecha Phantom Beast Auroradon. This card is another token producing card, which effectively cards like Link Cross and other cards we're gonna discuss will link into. And this card gives you three tokens to work with. Not only that, you can then tribute itself off and one of those tokens to get a Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion, which will then, when that's sent to the graveyard, produce another token. And the plays just continue to go on and on. Again, we know token producers are a problem. We've had plenty of tokens token producing cards banned in the past for their abuse and even with a restriction of not allowing you to link summon after the fact doesn't matter when you have some extremely powerful synchro monsters you can go into and take advantage of so again i don't think this is a likely target because it is still again relatively new but it's something that people are talking about so i thought i'd go ahead and throw it in here let's see where auroradon ends up Well, Auroradon's staying at three. Again, I think that's probably more likely gonna be the case because there's one card in particular we definitely have to talk about. Now, all these cards we've discussed, Jet Synchron, Link Cross, Auroradon, they all kind of circulate around one card in particular, and that card is Crystron Halifibrax. So, this is the card that is probably causing the most contention out of every argument I've seen online when it comes to whether or not this card should be banned. Personally, I think it should be. If you guys don't know over on YGeoscope, which basically takes data from the rated matches, and even in terms of not just counting the games of what decks win, it also counts cards in terms of how often they're played and at what frequency. Christron Halley Fibrax is like the fourth or fifth most played card right now, only losing out to like Ash Blossom and Infinite Impermanence and like other cards that are like that ubiquitous. That is how much play this card is seen. This card is the root of so many issues in the game right now. And again, you can hit stuff like Jet Synchron, you can hit stuff like Link Cross, but people are still gonna find ways to bypass that as long as this card stays in the game. This card is just begging to be abused and will continue to be abused until this card gets banned. And the thing is, you might ask yourself, well, Christron Holly Fibrax has like never seen the light of competitive physical play. The thing is though, think about it from Konami's perspective. If they don't hit this card, we already know what the format's gonna look like if we do return to normal physical play anytime soon. So do you really think they want people disenchanted with the fact knowing that they have to look forward to Auroradon needle fiber combos to go back to when they go to their locals or their regionals, or they have to go back to like Ad Emancipator, Halle Fibrax, Link Cross bullshit? Like this should not exist. This should not be a problem. And again, you can hit cards surrounding it, but what it all boils down to is that this is the problem card. And until this gets hit, there's going to be no other workaround. So I think it needs to be hit. But that doesn't matter on Banlist Roulette, so let's see what the wheel has to say about this one. Yes, it's banned. Okay, so, you know, if there's ever a time we want the wheel to be correct, it's now. Now, another card I want to discuss that isn't really being talked about too much, but kind of is a problem in and of itself, is True King of All Calamities. This kind of spawned as a result of these Jet Synchron Needle Fiber combos that have been going around, that one of the end boards is that you can end on a True King of All Calamities and also draw a few cards in the process for a single copy of Jet Synchron or any card that effectively does that, plus a lone discard. Like, 
That seems absurd, first of all, that any deck that can have the extra deck space to play that can accommodate something like this, but I think this kind of points to a larger issue that True King of All Calamities is just an inherently unfair card. A card like this, while well, yes, you do have to be playing level nines to be able to make a rank nine, like lingering effects are one of like the worst things in Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's really something you can't even play around. Like how many cards have we seen that just have some of these like oppressive effects that have like very little to no counterplay and I think this card is one of them and honestly I think people would be okay if this card got hit because yeah it's like an indirect hit to like some decks like maybe dinosaur but like would it be the end of the world I don't think so I think for the better health of the game this might be something to look at so let's see where true kings of all calamities ends up All right, this card going to two would accomplish absolutely nothing considering most of these decks just play one unless they're playing like extravagance builds, but I guess it's a start. Something else I wanted to discuss on Banless Roulette is the Invoked Engine. Now, this is something that people have talked about for a while now. It's kind of interesting because like Invoked has like these ups and downs very frequently where like it's in the best deck and then like it'll just not see any play whatsoever. Like we saw this with like Shadal Invoked, right? When that was the best deck. And then for a time, Invoked Eldritch was one of the best variants. And some people still prefer the Invoked Eldritch list because you can play more hand traps. So it like kind of works to combat like the combo decks in the particular format. But we also have to look to the future, right? We know that like Dragma is going to be coming out in Rise of the Duelist. Dragma Invoked is like one of the strongest decks in the OCG. And so like, do we want to see this deck like come to fruition? Like, I don't necessarily know. Some people are calling for just a check on the power level of the Invoked Engine, which I don't know if that's necessary. Like, I guess we can talk about Magical Meltdown in particular, because if you hit Meltdown to like one, then like it's hitting the consistency. You still have like Terraforming and Set Rotation, I suppose. You still have three Alistair, but like at least you're not gonna see Alistair as much. So like maybe just like a slight hit here. Who knows? Let's see where the wheel puts Magical Meltdown. Well, the wheel says that the Alistair Invoked Engine is perfectly fine, so it looks like that's not going anywhere. Since we've been discussing a lot of oppressive effects in this video, another card I want to discuss is Mystic Mine. A lot of people still feel that this card should go. Now, one of like the weird dichotomies of Mystic Mine is that like sometimes it's like the saving grace of a format where like it's one of the few cards that can actually compete against combo decks and like win. I mean, Ryan Yu was playing Sky Striker this past weekend in the LCS and guess what? He was playing Mystic Mine, and against Ad Emancipator, if they don't have any outs, like, you just win the game for no reason. But, like, is that exactly fun? Now you can make the argument that, like, combo decks shouldn't be able to just, like, vomit their hand and just be able to win instantaneously, but then does that mean that you should have a card that just automatically wins the game because someone doesn't play an out? I just don't feel like from, like, a gameplay design that really makes sense, even though, like, we have these, like, limiters in place for these types of crazy combo decks. I think we need to like hit both issues at once, but one of those would be hitting Mystic Mine. So let's see where Mystic Mine ends up, hopefully banned for the better sake of the game, but who knows, it's the wheel, anything's possible. Well, the wheel still wants to keep Mystic Mine around, so uh, sorry for that one. So we're nearing the end of the video here, and one card I want to discuss is ABC Dragon Buster. Do you guys remember on the last ban list, people were so hyped to be able to play ABC and Master Rule 5, kind of like the good old days, but then Konami came in, limited Dragon Buster, and pretty much crushed everyone's hopes and dreams. I don't even know if this deck would be good if it were at two or three. Like, would it matter? I don't think so, but let's let people find out if it's good. We also just got the Mechanized Madness Structure deck where we have like that quick play Union Carrier card. So like, I mean, just let us play with it and see what happens. There's also Union Driver that got released in Eternity Code, which is another cool piece of support. I don't know. I mean, just like, let's just see what happens. If it's bad, we'll just on the next list hit it. But I, with all the stuff we saw this format, I don't think this deck would have been able to compete whatsoever. So just for, you know, argument's sake, let's see where Dragon Buster ends up. All right, we're going back to three. ABC players rejoice. It is our time once again. And as per tradition, the last card I like to do on every episode of Banless Roulette is Max C. If there is a card that is going to cause a greater divide amongst opinions in the Yu-Gi-Oh community, it's Max C. Some people still think this card should come back to three. Those people are objectively incorrect, and there's a special pit in hell for those people to go once their time is up on this earth. But nonetheless, it is still a card. It's fun to kind of just speculate what might happen, but it should never come back. But a lot of people like to see what happens and what the wheel might think, because 
There have been times in the past where the wheel is very accurate with how these ban lists do turn up, so who knows, maybe it's a good open, maybe it's a bad, but Max C, let's see. So guys, that's gonna wrap up this episode of Banless Roulette. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to let me know down in the comments what you guys think about any other cards I might have missed in this episode. I really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video entertaining, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.